over dominant chords is something that everyone does as a jazz musician. However, oftentimes we get stuck in the rut of playing the same old ideas over these types of sounds. What if I told you that you could break out of your rut by using ideas that, you know, you already know? In today's lesson, I'm gonna show you how to unlock your dominant chord mastery. So for this video, I'm gonna assume that you already have some knowledge about how to play standard lines using the sounds of Mixolydian and the bebop dominant scale to get things that sound like this. So now I'm gonna show you two different ways to unlock your dominant chord mastery. And the third way at the end of this video will be how to compile all this information together. You don't wanna miss that. So the first way that you can unlock your dominant chord mastery is by understanding Barry Harris's concept of the family of dominants. This, very briefly, is the idea that some dominant chords are connected together in families by a diminished chord. So for example, if we had G7, then we could also play the sounds of B flat seven over this, D flat seven, and E7. Essentially, we just have to move our dominant chord up in minor thirds, or three frets, and all these chords will work over each other. Now, because these sounds all work over each other, we could take simple lines that are based around these arpeggios and mix in a little bit of the bebop scale and play them over each other. So if we had this G7 line, for example, we could move that line over the chords B flat seven, D flat, and E7, and they'll all work over G7. So essentially we could create one basic idea over one of these types of sounds, and then you'll have four new types of lines or sounds because you can move them all over each other. You could also play 2-5 language off of all these dominant chords. So for example, we have this really well-known 2-5 line off of a G7. Now play this line off of all four chords in the family of dominants over G7, and we've just created four lines or four different sounds out of this one idea. Now try connecting these lines together. You could also combine these lines with the arpeggios of the family of dominants. Really, the sky's the limit here. You just need to find a way to resolve these chords and ultimately use your ear as a guide. Okay, so the second way that you can unlock your dominant chord mastery is by pretty much doing the same thing, but now all our chords will be minor seven chords instead of dominant seven chords. Now the idea here is very similar to before. We're gonna take language over these minor chords and we're gonna use the arpeggios in order to connect these lines together and ultimately resolve them to our one chord. So for example, over a two, five, one in C major, we could of course play D minor language over the two chord. And then over the five chord, we could play a B flat minor seven arpeggio since that's part of our family of dominants and then resolve that B flat minor seven arpeggio to an A minor seven since that is a sound in our C major, so that's, it works. A minor also is C major. Also remember that you can use language over these minor chords too. Take the line that we did over the two chord, for example, and then move that line in place of the arpeggios for all the other minor chords that we played in this line. information might seem like a bit much. I get it. 
However, you have to look at this in terms of what's useful for me. Not everything has to be the most complicated line ever. For example, you could just run up the arpeggios until you find a way to resolve your five chord to the one chord that makes sense for you. Or simply play a two five line and just move it over the chords until you resolve it. See, that's not too difficult. The fun part for me is finding ways to use this concept with lines that you already know. Check out this line for example. We could spice it up by adding the B flat 7 arpeggio in place of our 5 chord. Or take this line. Again, instead of playing our normal 5 chord, we could play a D flat minor 7 arpeggio instead. So you can see, by using Barry Harris's family of dominants, we can infinitely expand what we can do over dominant chords using just simple ideas and ideas that we already know. All right, so I'm gonna close this lesson by playing one chorus over a blues and try to outline the various topics and concepts that we covered in this lesson. If you want the PDF for this etude, along with all the examples from this lesson, make sure to check out my Patreon page, which you can find in the description below. So you can see that with Barry Harris's concept, we can greatly expand our dominant chord plane and unlock our dominant chord mastery. If you made it this far in the video, I would really appreciate it if you gave this video a like and subscribe. It really helps out the channel and also lets me know that you guys like what I'm doing here. Also, as I stated before, I've recently just launched my Patreon page. If you've been following this channel for a while and want to support me, this is a great way to do it and you'll get some perks along with the PDFs from the lessons, the music XML file from the PDFs, so you can import it into any notation software you like, and you'll get other perks along with all those. Thanks in advance for your support, and remember to always keep swinging.